Alrighty, there you go. You just checked into, as you can uh, guess, the pre-Christmas uh, 2012 Five Minutes at the Frat House with Frat House Mike and Psychic. And uh, listen, I'm here to tell you right now, I mean, the Frat House has never looked more glorious than it does right now. All dressed up in its uh, Christmas regalia, as uh, you can say. I wish I wish we could actually turn the, the camera. Yeah, yeah, I know. Turn the camera around. Let everybody get to see everything. But I'm going to tell you right now, if all of you hang with us right to the end, we're going to give you a brief glimpse of what it looks like here yeah. at the frat house at Christmas time. We'll get so you, you got to stay all the way through to the end of the show. Yeah, and plus we have contractual obligations. We cannot show the technical director and that, staff. That's correct. That so is in the we, contract. You know, that's part of the whole crew uh, union thing and the and the and talent, the, and the yeah. talent. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 complicated, folks. We don't want to get into it. But it, it, it does have something to do with CBAs, but we don't want to get into that. Yeah. All right. Now, listen, sidekick. Assuming that we live through tomorrow's Mayan uh, uh, apocalypse, mm -hmm. uh, in less than five days, we will be observing uh, what has been frequently referred to as the Christmas miracle. Uh, and that got me thinking uh, the other day. Uh, it, it, and I was playing around with the concept of. If we were to identify our 2012, mm -hmm. that is the past year, sports Christmas miracles, uh, you know, that singular miraculous event in our minds, mm -hmm. or our respective minds, anyhow, uh, of what happened last year that would kind of constitute as being kind of our Christmas miracle for the year. And so I'm just curious, what would be, there you go, what would be your Christmas miracle for 2012? Well, I'm going to start with my runner-up. Uh, my runner-up would be the fact that I, sidekick, repeated as Fret House NASCAR oh, champion. <laughs> Unlike Jimmy Johnson, who did not repeat this, this season. This deserves to be runner-up, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, now, for, for my actual uh, miracle, uh, I, have, I, I need to preface this with saying that, you know, <laughs> Uh, I'm not often, <sighs> at a loss for words, <laughs> um, uh, wrong. um, okay, yeah. Shut up and start talking. Oh, I was wrong. You were wrong. Uh, well, you, you were wrong. 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 Yeah. Oh. Um, my miracle is Peyton Manning. Ah! Uh, I said he would not be back in football at all, and I was wrong. He so far this year, he's he's yeah. led the Broncos. Yeah, you know, that's a good one. He's led the, the Broncos to the playoffs. Yep. Uh, he's 347 of 511 with a six, you know, almost a 68% yep. uh, passer, you know, completion rate, mm -hmm. 31 touchdowns. They're 11 and 3. Got to be in the top five, uh, I think. I didn't know. This I, is. In, in QB rating, yeah. That's my come. That's my miracle. Yeah. Comeback okay. kid. That's a, that, that's a great choice, and I don't know. I mean, yours might actually beat mine. I'm going to be perfectly blunt with you. Yeah, I gave the question uh, a lot of thought and uh, contemplation. And when I first thought about it, my first response was, believe it or not, the past season of the Philadelphia 76ers. <coughs> Excuse me. Who made it into the NBA playoffs. Now, it wasn't a miracle that they made it into the playoffs because they had done that the year before. But to me, what was miraculous was that they went into the conference, uh, Eastern Conference semifinals against Boston and were only one win away from going to the finals. Uh, and to me... Uh, that was miraculous. That was my first reaction. But actually, I'll tell you, I'd have to say that the U.S. Women's Olympic uh, Gymnastics Team, which won gold uh, this past summer in uh, London, uh, that, I think, is the biggest miracle. Uh, now, let me be accurate, because there were a lot of people... <laughs> I <take> that. <laughs> there, were, there were a lot of people that... that there were a lot of people, and I, I'm going to get people to say, well, wait a minute, that's not a miracle, because they were favored. And yes, they were favored. But as we watched events unfold during the course of that week, it really started to appear that things were kind of fading away and slipping away. And yet, nonetheless, in the end, the ladies did win uh, the gold for the first time since 1996. And I make that event my Christmas miracle of 2012. Uh, now, 
well, let, let's just stay on the topic for a moment because I thought what might be fun mm -hmm. is if we were to, uh, you know, particularly for next year at this time, uh, that we do our best version of, of, of Mayan prognostication. We'll do a little Mayan sure. prognostication and anticipate what our Christmas miracle might be for 2013. All right. Uh, and so then what we'll do is next year at this time, we'll go back and we'll, as they say, pull the tape and we'll start mm -hmm. the, we'll start it that way. And then we'll take a look at what we thought would be our miracles for this year. So for the coming year, what do you think, or what do you like? What would you like to be your Christmas miracle for next year? Well, actually, I'm going to go a little off the, off the beaten path. No, it wouldn't surprise me. Absolutely. I'm going to, I'm going to say... <laughs> What I want to see happen this year is I want to win my first MMA fight. I've set a goal that... It's all about you know, me. <laughs> it's all about me. Um, I set a goal for November. I want to do uh, one amateur MMA fight. And when we roll back the tape, I'm hoping that I am victorious in my amateur fight. Okay. I give you our champion! But I would also now, like to see the Rams in the playoffs. I think a lot of us here at... Okay, all right, wait a minute. So which one are you prioritizing? I think, yeah, a, lot of us, I think a lot of us here at the Fred House would actually put it up. Uh, did you say you want to win one? I want to win okay. my fight. I think I don't a lot wanna... of us here at the Fred House would say that that would be an absolute miracle, yes. I... Uh, it will be miracle worthy. Oh, this is going to be priceless when we pull the tape on this next year. I've got yep. to tell you. Um, I don't Especially go... if I get my tail handed to me. <laughs> Do we have to pull the tape up? Uh, listen, I, I, I'm not going to make this quite as personal. Uh, uh, and maybe I'm just a more simplistic individual than Psychic here. Uh, for me, it would be that the uh, Philadelphia Eagles next year, well, let's have them open up the season with a new head coach. Uh, but more than that, I want a new head coach that's going to post a winning season and is going to get us into the playoffs uh, exactly one year after what potentially will be a 4-12 and season. To me, that would be a miracle. All righty. And we'll pull the tape on that next season. Yep. Can't wait. I, I can't either. <laughs> All right, let's go take a look at a Christmas-related uh, Frat House Facebook post of the week. Uh which was our Frat House welcome sign that hangs here, right here, right here in this very room at the Frat House and was posted by our own Jen right here on our staff. Well, contractually, we can't show her. Um, and so <laughs> that sign, and, 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 and Jen stated, all sports fans, regardless of your sport uh, or team affinity, are always welcome right here at the Frat House. It's just how we roll. Yep. Um, now, that post got the uh, most comments and views. Uh, by our fan base, uh, and that's appreciated, particularly at this holiday-esque time of year. Um, but here's what I would suggest. I know that a lot of you can't get here, and that's fine. I don't know if we'd really want y'all, but make sure you get over to the Facebook page, all right? You got to go out. Go on Facebook, search the Frat House Eagleville, like the page, and guess what? You're welcome all year long, all year. As long as you bring a case of Budweiser for Mike. <laughs> Well, then you get then you get entrance. You get immediate entrance at that point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. Lifetime this membership. Is, this is a bad week to do that. All right, let's go take a look at the NFL. And uh, holy smokes, we're into week 16. It's hard to believe. So I can, yep. uh, we only got two games left. We've only got two games left remaining in the regular season. And it seems like we were just ushering in the season all those weeks ago back at the show at McGurk's in Fort Washington. Yes. Does everybody remember that show way remember back that? when? Where? At McGurk's in Fort Washington. Fort Washington. Yes, we were there, and we ushered in the season that very yep. evening on our anniversary. And I can't believe we're already here with just two games left in the regular season. And Eagles fans can't wait for the season to be over. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to take a look at four games right now. And these aren't ones that we think are going to have an impact. These are ones that we know are going to have an impact on the upcoming playoffs. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to bring you a heavy dose of the NFC East in a moment. And why shouldn't we? Look, hey, the Redskins, the Cowboys, and the Giants are all tied uh, for first in that division at 8-6. and six. But we're going to kick it off with a non 
uh, NFC East matchup, and that's the Cincinnati Bengals, who are 8-6 and six at the Pittsburgh Steelers, who are 7-7. Seven and seven. That's a 1 o'clock game on Sunday. Both Cincinnati and Pittsburgh sidekick are fighting to get into the playoffs uh, as a wild card. Uh, now, obviously, by record, uh, the Bengals, I think, have a bit of an edge, obviously. Yep. Uh, while Pittsburgh, uh, well, they're probably going to need a bit of help in order to get in there. Uh, they're going to have to win, but they're going to need a little bit of help. Now, it certainly would appear, uh, if you take a look at the scores from last week, it would appear that the Bengals had little trouble uh, dismantling the Philadelphia Eagles last Thursday night, beating them 34-13. to However, you got to dig deep into that box score because when you do and you look at the numbers closely, the Bengals only had 249 yards of offense, total offense, compared to the Eagles who had 219. All right? Andy Dalton, uh, let's get it straight. He really wasn't all that. Uh, the Ginger Giant ended his, the game uh, with a 74.2 QB rating. Difference really came uh, in the third quarter with a defensive 25-yard uh, fumble recovery for uh, a touchdown by uh, Wallace Gilbury. Now, last weekend, the Steelers played the Dallas Cowboys. And, you know, I got I to gotta be honest, and I said this here, I can never watch the, the Steelers and the Cowboys without going back to those classic Super Bowl matchups. Anytime I see those two teams and the colors on the field, I always think of those Super Bowl games from years ago. And the outcome we had this past week was kind of Super Bowl-esque, when you think about it. Uh, had that same type of result as the Cowboys won the game 27-24. Roethlisberger was 24-40 uh, for 339 yards, two TDs, one interception, a 93.6 QB reading. Touchdowns from uh, Jonathan Dwyer, Heath Miller, and Antonio Brown. Uh... A Pittsburgh win this uh, week uh, could make the wild card race very, very interesting going into week mm -hmm. 17. Uh, yep. Psychic. That's why um, we're highlighting it, right? Yeah. And, uh, and, and the Steelers right now are, in fact, favored <clears throat> by three and a half. Yep. Well, I'm going with this as my bomb digging pick of the week because of, you know, the implicate, playoff yep. implications here because the Bengals right now are sitting on a wild card spot and the Pittsburgh wants to knock them off. They need to beat the Bengals. Yep. Uh, plus, they need some help. Um, but now, looking at the the matchup here, uh, I'm going to go with Pittsburgh on this. Big Red is three and seven against the AFC North. Mm -hmm. They've never he's never beaten the Rams or the or I'm sorry the Ravens or the Steelers, and the Bengals are 0 and eight in the last eight games against the Ravens, and. The Steelers. They've mm -hmm. only ever, uh, Big Red's only ever beaten uh, the the Browns. Mm -hmm. So I'm going with Pittsburgh this you week. You bring up some great points uh, right there. And, and, you know, I looked at all of those very facts today before, you know, I, I was making these picks. Actually, yesterday before I was making these picks. Uh, I, I'm going to be, t I'm going to tell you right now, I, I concur with you on those. And it makes me a little bit like this about it. However, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to take Cincinnati. And I'm going to take Cincinnati because I think that Pittsburgh has just been too inconsistent in recent weeks. And that's why I'm picking Cincinnati on this one. But I think it would make for a really, really interesting situation if Pittsburgh does. And we might very well end up spending our whole time next week talking about the AFC North. Yep. <coughs> Let's go take a look at week uh, game two, rather. Uh, game two is the New Orleans Saints, who are 6-8. and eight, uh, And they will be playing um, at Dallas against the Dallas Cowboys, who are 8-6. and six. It's a 1 o'clock game on Sunday. Uh, and this is the first of those numerous NFC East games that we're going to be talking about. I've mentioned over the past uh, number of weeks that the Saints, and I've kind of grouped them into that, that group of schizophrenic NFC teams. Uh, but uh, after last week, we might also have to include uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers as well into that group. Because holy smokes, the Saints came out last week and beat the Bucs up. 41 to nothing. Listen to these numbers for Drew Brees last week. 26 of 39, 307 yards, four touchdowns, no interceptions, 124.6 QB rating. Plus he spread the ball around to nine different receivers, three of whom had touchdowns. Mark Ingram had 90 yards on the ground, plus a touchdown. Holy smokes, what a smackdown. Yeah. Um, Holy ball and chain. Yeah. Uh, now, we just mentioned the Cowboys uh, and how they barely got by the Steelers uh, in a classic sort of way, uh, beating them 27-24. Which Romo showed up last week? Well, it was the good Romo. 
30 of 42 he was, 341 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions, 111.3 QB rating. Uh, no doubt about the fact that DeMarco Murray has really rounded out that whole game plan. Mm -hmm. I mean, he really sure. has aided the boys' game plan at this point. He racked up 112 all-purpose yards and had a rushing touchdown. Like Rizzo, Romo found a way to spread that ball around, and he got it to nine different receivers himself uh, against a generally respected uh, uh, Steelers defense. Here we go. As I pointed out, this is the first conversation we're going to have of, of a couple here, You're right in a row, about NFC East teams. The Cowboys are favored by three. Yes? No? Where are we going? Um, well, you know, if we take a look back to the Thanksgiving show, uh, you know, Tony Romo never lost a Thanksgiving game, mm -hmm. and he lost. And we said, you know, he always slumps in December, mm -hmm. and that perhaps his luck would change this year if he loses on Thanksgiving, he'd actually win in December. Well, I went and looked, and surprise, he's won every game in December. So it's a little, you know, a little bit of interesting facts. But this is where I'm going to, you know, in the interest or, you know, because this show has been about me, I don't want to see the Cowboys in the playoffs. I'm going with Saints. Okay. Well, uh, I've talked about this before, and I've brought it up numerous times. i got to go with the Cowboys on this one. This is an NFC, uh, uh, NFC like I haven't seen in many, many years. we got three teams right up there, all fighting for the number one spot. I've claimed before, and I'm going to claim it again. We're not seeing a wild card, I don't believe, coming out of the NFC East. Whoever comes out of this is going to have to win the division. That's the only one that's getting into the playoffs. The synergy going on is going to compel these three teams for the next two weeks. Go with yep. the Cowboys on this one. Plus, it's at the Cowboys. Not that that's a home field advantage, though. I will say that. I mean, it really hasn't been yeah. a home field advantage. For I mean, uh, honestly, you know, honestly, it, it is a must. It's a must win it is. for the Cowboys. Yes. But like I said, I've got you know I'm prejudiced. You call me that. I don't want to see the Cowboys in the playoffs, so I'm not gonna pick them this week. And you make a great point because yeah. we're gonna roll right into uh, game three, and it yeah. is a must win for the Cowboys because we're taking a look at the Washington Redskins who are eight yep. and six. And they're going to be playing at the link against the Philadelphia Eagles, who are 4-10. and 10. And that, again, is a 1 o'clock game. And why is it a must-win for the Cowboys? Because technically, right now, the Washington Redskins hold the number one spot in the East by virtue of a tiebreaker. Now, according to ESPN today, Robert Griffin III uh, is expected to start uh, this Sunday uh, against the Eagles. Uh, and, and let's just mention this right now. This is a rookie RG3 who is currently ranked second in the league in QB rating. Um, last week, though, they didn't need rookie number one. The Skins went with rookie number two. That was Kirk Cousins. And they still managed a 38-21 to victory over the Cleveland Browns. The uh, Redskins certainly appear uh, at this point right now to have a rather balanced uh, team uh, with their ground game covered by Alfred Morris and uh, Darrell Young. And their aerial game is uh, covered as well by Pierre Garçon, who now is healthy and looks very, very good. Josh Morgan... And uh, you, look, you can even throw in uh, Santana Moss uh, just for fun. Now, I wish I could say as good of things uh, about the uh, Eagles, who, uh, well, let's just get it straight. They're, they're just flat out. They're horrible on both sides of the ball. The Eagles uh, this week are expected to start Nick Foles, uh, uh, who to date has really, let's get it, I mean, everybody's talking about him, but really he's only been marginally better uh, in passing completion percentage over Michael Vick. Uh, Vick, by the way, right now is now relegated to the third string, all right, for this coming week. Hmm, a lot of people wondering what's going on there. Uh, last Thursday, uh, in their loss to the Bengals, the Eagles, as usual, got away from the running game with a ridiculous 42 yards on the ground. Why even bother? However, the word is Shady McCord will be playing. Yep. Now, limited activity, that's what we're told, but... We're expecting to see him back on the field. Now, I don't oh, know if that's going to make that much of a difference. Now. Anytime you talk about Andy Reid and running game, you're talking about <laughs> limited participation. I mean, let's, let's well, keep it straight. And so you've confirmed, you confirmed my point. I don't know if it's going to make that much of a difference. My gosh, the Washington Redskins right now are a whopping six-and-a-half-point favorite. Uh, is this a case where the Eagles are just basically going to hand them the number one spot in the NFC East this week? Basically, yeah. I mean – the. The Eagles are on life support. I don't care whether you're starting RG3 
or Cousins, anybody that can fog a mirror knows that you're going to pick the Redskins this week. Yeah. I'm going with the Redskins. Oh, hold on. I better change my pick. But no, no. I had the Redskins picked all along on this one. I mean, seriously. I, you know, I, personally, I don't believe the Eagles are going to win another game, and I okay, think they're going to get more the 12. I'm sorry about that, uh, Andy, but um, you're killing us with it. Let's get yeah. it straight. Let's go take a look at our fourth and uh, final, but probably m might be the most important game of all of them, and that's the New York Giants, who are 8-6 and six again at the Baltimore Ravens, who are 95, and that is a 425 game on Sunday. Uh, and as I just pointed out, with this game now, we have covered the entire NFC East. Yep. And at this point, too, all eyes are on the defending Super Bowl champion uh, Giants. This is a team that, as I pointed out numerous times, we are used to seeing coming on at this time of year, uh, but that didn't happen last week. Uh, and I got to wonder whether that's uh, hmm, maybe not the best sign in the world. The G-Men last week got smoked by the Atlanta Falcons, 34 to nothing. Uh, this they had to be uh, th th This had to be, in my opinion, Eli Manning's worst game of the entire season. He went 13 of 25, 161 yards, no touchdowns, two interceptions, are you ready for this QB rating from Eli Manning? 40.7, huh? Nice. This whole team last week was just positively anemic. Uh, and you didn't have to look very far uh, in the box score. You didn't have to look at all the stats. Uh, only one stat you need to look at to get an idea of this, and that was time of possession, which favored the Falcons 39 minutes to 21. That's a clear indication there were far too many three and outs for the Giants. Now, on the other side, we've got the Ravens. And the mm -hmm. Ravens have yet to, uh, yes, they've clinched the playoff spot, but they've yet to clinch uh, the AFC North. And if the Bengals uh, beat those Steelers, as we discussed earlier, the North Division might be looking like the NFC East, as I already alluded, going into Week 17. Uh, the Ravens really could have helped themselves out last weekend uh, against the Denver Broncos, but uh-uh, they didn't. Uh, the Broncos won that one 34-17. to now, I'm on record. I've never been a big fan of Joe Flacco. Mm, let's take a look at his numbers from last week. How about 20 of 40? Huh? 40, yeah. Two TDs. All right. One interception, a 76.5 QB rating. But here was the big difference. I have mentioned this before. When Ray Rice is a part of the game plan, the Ravens win. And Rice was not part of that game plan. Uh, he only had a paltry 38 yards. Um... Were they channeling Andy Reid there? Really? Really? Um, I think this might be one of the best games of the entire weekend, Psychic, uh, which is why the NFL actually flexed this game to the 430 spot. Uh, this was originally scheduled for one. The Giants are a mere two-and-a-half-point favorite over the Ravens. Still no Ray Lewis for the Ravens this week. Right. Uh, can the Ravens pull this one off? Um, well, you know, I... <sighs> To go back to the Giants Falcons game, you know, we I'm gonna talk a moment on the about the Falcons, uh, who we've you know been really hard on. Who have they beaten? Who have they beaten? Mm -hmm. They blanked the Giants. Yep. Um, so you you got you know, we kinda have to now give a little prop to the Falcons. I mean, you know, yeah. the fact that they blanked them out. Um, now insist. we'll now you know, now we'll see if they can actually get a you know, here's my backhanded. We'll see if they can get a playoff win now. But, like I said, you well, You, you made kinda, that prediction last week. I wrote it down I know. if you remember. But, you know, you got to give them a little props for, blank, you know, again, blanking the Giants. Uh, back to this week's upcoming game. Eli needs to come out and have a big game after that disaster in Atlanta. Um, Flacco, not so much. Uh, you know, I, I don't see big game potential from Flacco. I'm going with the Giants on this one. I think they the Giants come out. With their yeah, you know, after getting handed their tail handed to them last week, and they come out and they make a statement this week, and, and it's going to be against the Falcons or the, I'm sorry, the Ravens. Right, and I think the Ravens are going to make a statement. That's what I think. I think the Ravens are going to make a statement. I think they're recognizing. This is my personal opinion. I, I'm a little bit nervous about this Giants team. They're not appearing to me to be what they have been in December's past, and that's got me a bit nervous. Um, I think the Ravens come out and make the statement. I think the Ravens win this game. All right, there you have it. There's four games. Hey, and these are not ones that are of interest. These are ones we know are going to have yep. impact on the NFL and on the playoffs as we go forward. All righty, let's uh, jump it around real quick. A few reminders. 
<laughs> hey, you're going to have some time off. Everybody does. It's the holiday mm -hmm. season. We got time off coming up for Christmas and then New Year's and what have you. You got time off. You're sitting there. You're bored. Ah, no need to be bored. Might as well jump over to fanjunkies.net. Sign up. It's completely free. All right? Where sports meet social networking. It's like the old Facebook. Get over there. Join it. Jonathan will thank you. I'll thank you. Sidekick will thank, thank you. you. Okay? And they promise they won't sell your pictures. Uh, they don't. They don't do that. Isn't that great? Uh uh <clears throat> Excuse me. Fan Junkies Radio. We're going to be back on, at our, yeah, as we usually are, on yep. Friday, tomorrow. We've had some tremendous shows recently, Jonathan and I. And that just keeps growing every single day. That's over on Blog Talk Radio. you got to check that one out. Uh, it's the holiday time, and I want to send a special Christmas greeting out to our friends uh, down there in uh, the Baltimore, Washington area. Uh, uh, my friend uh, Chris Idell over at herfm.com, yep. uh, okay? Uh, they have been rebroadcasting our five minutes at the frat house programs over their radio, and yep. we truly appreciate it. They've been doing them, oh, for like the past number of weeks, five, six weeks. And we appreciate that. We thank them. Yep. And Merry Christmas to you guys down there in the Baltimore region. And go check it out. Absolutely. Herbfm.com. Uh, last but not least, uh, Friday yeah. Sports. Hey, make it a New uh, Year's resolution you that you've got that bookmarked, will you? Huh? Yep. Because I'm going to tell you, we're, I, I'm making a New Year's resolution that there's going to be a lot more updating coming up on that. And I'm actually looking to get new writers, and not new writers, but more writers, get more writers and get them uh, to really start getting things moving over on that. So you can expect great things coming from Frat House Sports in 2013. Finally. From all of us here at the Frat House, uh, we want to wish you a, you and yours and everybody that, uh, that, that you know, a, a, a very, very, very Merry Christmas. We thank you for following us this entire year, and the holidays always bring that kind of wonderful stuff out in all of us. Thank you yep. so much. And from all of us at the Frat House, I, I just want to... <laughs> Just want to wish a Merry Christmas to all of our servicemen and service Absolutely. women who are away from home, who can't be with their families this year defending our country. Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. Now, do us all a favor. Give us all one more Christmas miracle here. You know what that is. Keep us real. Keep us live. Keep us going. We'll see you next week right before New Year. See you then. Yep.